Upgrades, modifications, and accessories for the clandestine radio station. Okay, why would you want a clandestine radio station? There's a lot of reasons out there. I'll discuss that in the comment section below. But this is your basic box, 70, 80, 100, 150 bucks, depending on where you buy them, when you buy them, that sort of a thing. Um, it has different connectors on there. There's basically two audio feeds that go off these relatively standard plug-in connectors that you're going to find on all sorts of stuff. Okay, so... So like that right there, uh, I'm holding the camera with one hand, this plug here. So basically, let's say you were to have a iPod and want to run a small in-house uh, radio station at your mansion. Okay, you could have this thing set up. You could have uh, speakers all over the place. The speakers receive, feed through uh, small amplifiers like that one. And, uh, and you're off-grid and you can pump music all over your little off-grid retreat or your campsite or whatever off your own playlist okay the cool thing you could do because these plugs are all compatible let's say with your iPod uh, older iPhone you know it's a very powerful computer in one of these things what you can do is you can play DJ with the microphone attachment this is something you buy separately for about six eight bucks plug that in there and just just like a DJ you can raise and lower your volume on your microphone feed versus your audio feed to uh, uh, get things through, you know, what's what's going to be transmitted. And this can show up on car stereos. It can show up on any radio that's going to hook into your amplifier system, your outside speakers, whatever's going to be out there, any any stereo you come up with, okay? And it's one of the things I noticed they never had on um, Walking Dead when it when they're talking about all these survival things. How come nobody's operating a radio station and giving their news their way? I've not seen that in seven episodes of Walking Dead. Uh, if you look at real-world revolutions, everybody wants to take over the radio station, and then they control the narrative of the revolution, and then otherwise they're maybe running clandestine radio stations uh, and influencing the narrative of the revolution in uh, emergency broadcast system stuff. You know, obviously that's uh, out there. It's also highly dependent on the Internet. So it's, it's not going to be active in some areas, especially if somebody out there has an internet kill switch they're controlling from a centralized location. Okay, that's, that's a danger. They've gone new tech on a lot of this stuff. The old tech may or may not work, and, and it is what it is. Uh, the question is, how can you do this with a little more efficiency than just the little antenna coming off the back? Well, my viewers have really helped me out with some information about this. This screw-in connector is called a TNC connector. There's an adapters, and they, they talk about TNC male and female adapters. And then there's adapters to BNC. Now, BNC connectors are these little twist lock jobbies. You're going to see these a lot on CCTV cameras, you know, closer uh, TV cameras, uh, uh, that, that the surveillance camera type stuff. They tend to use those little quick detach uh, BNC connectors. Um, there's a male and a female on that, and when you buy the cords, the cords almost always have the um, they they always have what they call the male end because they're talking about the little little end in there, the little little thing in there. the The thing is, it's 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 like a socket goes over a socket type stuff. So. When you want to connect two cords together, you, you get these little double, they call this the double female, I, I thought it was a double male, but anyway, you get these, they're not all good, so you actually have to get a bag of them, and then test them, and, and test your system to make sure that you're plugging good ones into the system, but with the adapters, then what happens is, you can run your antenna on a long cable, hang that thing up in a tree. Uh, put it on the outside of a larger thing or larger, uh, uh, you know, you can have an antenna mount on a vehicle because these, these types of antennas, um, once you run your adapters, you actually control the SWR on your antenna by just raising and lowering a little, you know, old style uh, Radio Shack uh, extendable antenna. And the length of the antenna, you can optimize your transmit power so... You could actually put a bulkhead mount on a vehicle and everything that looks like a just another radio antenna, FM radio antenna on a vehicle is 
actually a transmitter. Okay, it's actually you're transmitting a radio station. Um, so when you get one of these things, I suggest getting some TNC to BNC uh, adapter connectors, one male, one female. Uh, that that way, and then you'll get a BNC cable. These just come with the, the male connectors on both ends. And then you'll be able to uh, attach your antenna to other stuff. Um, BNC bulkhead connectors are a little harder to find, but they are around. Just remember, the more adapters and connectors you go through with these things, the more your chance of a bad connection. So uh, doing your little SWR testing and your other testing is going to matter. Uh, the other thing that's going to matter is a signal amplifier if you're trying to get over a broader area. This is not very directional. This is this is uh, a cloud that uh, emanates from your antenna. And that cloud is shaped by buildings and obstructions and other things like that, but it's basically a, a cloud or a ripple that emanates from the antenna and is affected by the, the buildings and shapes of the ground around it. Um, now, as far as a clandestine radio station, and what your options are on that, what your audio feeds are, that's a concept thing. I'm going to go into that in the next video. But uh, I'm going over just the equipment, your TNC, the BNC connectors, your BNC cable, which uh, often is going to be available as an audio feed cable. I, I'm sorry, video, video feed cable. When you order them and you order different lengths of cable, realize there's different shielding and, and different uh, thickness and, and transmit rates on that cable. Uh, some are, are going to be more portable and longer distance. Some are better than others. If you're doing this on an antenna, realize that the longer that cable is before it actually gets to the antenna, uh, you, you're going to lose some signal in that cable. Okay, that's, that's, that's going to happen. You're going to lose a little signal in that cable. Uh, the a lot of guys are like great. You gotta you gotta run more transmit power. You gotta pump that through an amplifier. Getting one of these boxes with more transmit power in the box is usually not the best solution to that problem. Uh, I I I think you're better off having a separate item that's a transmitter uh, amplifier. So if any single component goes bad, you can replace that bad component without necessarily having to really, you know, desolder a bunch of stuff. You know, you just want to be able to plug and screw stuff without having to desolder and deal with all that or say, hey, we've got a $600 device that went bad. You, you want to be able to replace components on these things.